Hey there. In today's episode, we're going to add to our chakra series by exploring a little-known chakra, which some people call the Earth Star Chakra. I decided it was necessary to do this episode because I am seeing a dramatic trend since 2020 of people's Earth Star Chakras being profoundly out of alignment. To be honest, for a great many people, their Earth Star Chakra is so closed it appears dime size or in some cases much smaller. This is also a growing epidemic that I'm seeing in more and more children today. So, just like we've done for the other chakras, I'm going to teach you about this chakra, such as where it is and what it does, as well as teach you how to make sure it is in a state of alignment, both emitting and absorbing energy. At the most basic level, your body is made up of energy. This energy organizes itself into the physical body. But before that energy organizes itself into physical body parts, it organizes itself into meridians and chakras. These chakras are centers of energy that lie along energy channels, and each one holds a very specific vibration and has a very specific purpose. Each chakra is a specific expression of prana, otherwise known as life force or source energy. The chakras are a bit like funnels of energy or vortices. They both absorb and emit energy. When a chakra is out of alignment, meaning it is not letting life force in or is out of alignment for any number of other reasons, it starts to affect your equilibrium. It becomes a serious imbalance within the energy system. When chakras are out of alignment, they appear small, they don't absorb or emit much energy. They also change in their color, their patterning, their texture, and of course, their sound. The Earth Star Chakra, sometimes referred to as Chakra Zero or Vasundhara, is located in a person's energy field, about half a foot to a foot below the feet. It is traditionally associated with the color amber brown. It can be compared sort of to the color of like Coca-Cola if you were to hold it to the light. The Earth Star Chakra is in fact an anchor for the entire energy body and the entire chakra system. For this reason, it is sometimes referred to as the super root. It governs a person's connection with and commitment to engaging in their external physical environment. For a physical human, this has meant physical existence specifically on Earth so far. <laughs> because of this, you can think of this chakra as the bond between a person and the external physical environment. At this point, the bond between a person and Earth. The Earth Star Chakra is even more important to grounding than the Root Chakra is. It excretes unneeded energies from the rest of the chakra system out into the external world, including down into planet Earth. And it pulls in energy from the external world, including the planet Earth itself. The Earth Star Chakra is also very deeply linked to cause and effect, as well as to karma. When it is open and in alignment, this chakra brings deep levels of attunement to your environment. It brings energy from the environment, including from Earth itself, into the whole of the chakra system. It helps you to stay really, really present with your day-to-day -day physical tasks. It causes you to feel grounded and also stable. It causes you to behave in reliable ways. It causes a feeling of connectedness with your environment and life on Earth, as well as a sense of being an integral part of it. And it makes it so you can recognize resources that exist as well as take in needs from your environment, i.e. the external world. Another thing is you're probably going to feel ready to take on the challenges of life when it's in alignment. You'll feel committed to engaging in and with all the elements of physical existence. It brings a kind of a zest for life, and it compels you to take your place and role within the bigger picture of physical existence. But let's look at the other side of this equation. When it is closed, when it is out of alignment, you will be out of touch with your surroundings. You're going to be having a very difficult time being present. You're going to be unattuned to your environment. You're going to be ungrounded and unstable. You're going to be disconnected from all things external, be it people, places, or things. You're going to feel uncommitted to physical life and struggle to take in needs from your environment, i.e. the external world. The lack of intake of energy from one's environment can leave you feeling fatigued, undernourished, and even frail. There will also be built up and unneeded and even toxic energies within a person's energy system that are not being released. The disconnection, as well as this pent-up negative energy dynamic, causes constant agitation. It can cause eating disorders, it can cause leg issues, severe phobias, autism spectrum disorders, or what people are calling autism spectrum disorders, mood swings circulation disorders, depression, anxiety, and a whole plethora of long-term illnesses. So what causes the Earth Star Chakra to go out of alignment? 
Well, I'll give you some examples. The first is any traumatic experience that causes you to fear or decommit to life as a physical person on Earth. The decision to disconnect from others can do it. The refusal to engage in physical sensory experiences or the deprivation of physical sensory experiences. Resistance to being a human, dissociation, being too lost in the realm of thought and emotions rather than being embodied in the here and now. Um, inserting way too much of your consciousness into alternative non-physical worlds, such as out-of-body work, medicine work, much more common for today is things like video games, online worlds, movies, or virtual reality. Also, not spending enough time in nature. Okay, so knowing all that, here is what you can do to open your Earth Star Chakra and bring it into a state of alignment. One, decide to really engage in physicality with all of your focused attention. This is by far the best way to connect to your Earth Star Chakra and bring it into alignment. This means whatever task you are doing, be completely present in it and with all of your senses. Rather than allowing thought to pull you away from what is happening in the here and now, let thoughts arise and simply phase out as you engage in the experience fully of whatever it is you're doing. For example, let's say that you are going to be doing the dishes. You want to feel every little sensation against your skin, such as the weight of the dish, or the slipperiness of the surface, or the rush of the water against your hands, or the temperature of the water. You want to take note of every scent, such as the smell of the soap. You want to notice the sounds, such as background noises, or the sound of the water that's rushing out of the faucet, the clank of ceramic. You want to let yourself soak in the sights that are in front of you and notice how the colors make you feel emotionally. Noticing the various textures, such as the holes in the sponge or the shine of the metal. Make the whole goal to be completely present with all of your sensory faculties in the here and now, engaged entirely in whatever you are doing or whatever is happening in the here and now. Two, sensory experiences. What this means is basically seek out and design sensory experiences for yourself. In order to do this well, you want to think about the kinds of experiences that would not be available to you in the non-physical and then do those things. This can be things like seeking out G-force experiences by riding a roller coaster or sticking your hands in a bucket of uncooked rice or smelling all of the spices in your spice rack one by one or, <laughs> for many of you, uh, smelling all the essential oils in your essential oil collection. <laughs> It can also be things like, you know, having your lover go over your skin with a dry brush, to blasting the music and letting your body move to it. Three, mindfulness meditations, specifically that center around awareness of the here and now. Any meditation that causes you to have awareness of the environment slash the external world works wonders for the Earth Star Chakra. Four, exercise and also body work. Physical exercise commits more of your energy to the physical. So does body work of any kind, such as yoga, breath work, kinesiology, acupuncture, massage, somatic healing, things like this. Physical movement in sports can go a long way toward the health of the Earth Star Chakra. Five, consciously put energy into recognizing and resolving any traumas that may have weakened your commitment to living life as a physical person on Earth. The goal here is to reestablish your commitment to being present in life, committed to life, and engaging in your external physical environment. Six. Grounding exercises and immersion in nature. The very same grounding exercises that benefit the root chakra benefit the earth star chakra. This can include grounding meditations, cold plunges, and walking barefoot on the earth. What you want to do is to spend time immersed in natural environments and surrounded by nature. This is one of the best ways to bring the earth star chakra into alignment. 7. Clear your karma. The super simplified idea of karma is that your actions in this incarnation, as well as previous incarnations, decide your fate in this life, as well as future incarnations. To witness karma is simply to witness that in this universe there is cause and there is effect. And it is to recognize that we will be a match to a reflection, i.e. external experience, of whatever we, quote, are. For example, if we hold a pattern of creating transaction and relationships, we will be a match to people who also hold this pattern and who are transactional with us. Or if we push people away, we end up alone. And when we make decisions and take actions in our life, in the here and now, it affects everyone in the past and everyone in the future and everyone around us, right? The word karma is a Sanskrit word that means act or deed. In Hinduism and Buddhism, the word has come to mean any decision or any action that brings you good or bad results, either in this lifetime or in a reincarnation. It has also come to mean fate or destiny. 
Therefore, to clear up karma, what you're going to do is you're going to identify a decision that you made or an action that you took, specifically one that brought about bad results, and you're going to clear some karma by making a different decision and by taking a different action or by righting the wrong. What this does essentially is to pull you in a different and corrective direction. For example, let's imagine that you were really unkind to someone in high school. You could seek them out to apologize and make amends for whatever you did. Another thing that you could do is to volunteer as a mentor for high school kids that are either being bullied or are bullies themselves. That's just some very simple ways of clearing that karma. Eight, use mineral energies. In my opinion, the very best for the Earth Star Chakra specifically are Dravite, Bronzite, Enstatite, Lodestone, Picture Jasper, Starlight, Sandstone, Hylotite, Rhodonite, Petrified Wood, Petalite, Botswana Agate, Jasper Hematite, Obsidian, especially Mahogany Obsidian, Andalusite, Citrine, Amber, Smoky Quartz, and Tiger Iron. 9. Use sounds and frequencies. This could be as simple as going out into nature and bathing in the sounds that are happening there. The earth itself, in fact, has a sound. By going into nature, this sound is able to vibrate more purely through your whole being. Aside from this, the sounds which I notice have the very greatest impact on the earth star chakra specifically are the pure frequency of 68.5 hertz and 432 hertz. Stone drums, forest sounds, desert sounds, and cave sounds. Hand pan music, birdsong in general, but especially the low tone birdsong birds, such as the ring dove, the kiwi, the American bittern, and the cassowary. And also the sound of a cat's purr. 10. Practice attunement with what is external to you. The best way to imagine attunement is to imagine sitting in your car and reaching out for the radio dial. One of the old ones, right? If you want to hear the music being played at a specific frequency, like 98.2 FM, you need to tune your radio dial to 98.2 FM, and then you will hear the music. Your own radio dial needs to be brought into harmony with, or become one with, the radio channel that you want to receive in order to perceive that radio channel. And in fact, it's no different with other beings. This includes other people. It's also no different with the environment that you're in, right? People, places, and things. To be able to perceive other people and to feel and see and hear them and understand them and also communicate with them, you need to attune to them. You need to tune into them as if you are them so as to be able to feel or imagine the other person's emotional experience and understand exactly what it is that they are feeling. You need to be able to fully perceive what is about any person, place, thing, or environment that you encounter in the external world. This is what allows you to know what to do in any given situation. It may be interesting for some of you to know that the people who perhaps had some of the most in alignment and wide open earth star chakras were in fact living in tribal societies and were trackers and hunters. Why? Because it was so essential for them to attune to their environment. And in this practice, day after day, they developed a very strong connection between themselves and their physical existence here on earth. To learn more about attunement and how to practice it, you can watch my video titled Attunement, the Key to a Good Relationship. The lesson that the Earth Star Chakra teaches us is that it is possible to be here, living a human life on Earth, without being truly committed to being here, living a human life on Earth. And to be that uncommitted to physicality is to abandon, reject, and disown a big, big part of yourself. To be that disengaged is to not make the most of the incredible opportunity and exceptional experience of physical life. Here on Earth. Have a good week.